is this? Throne on Terra. Override Vox recording. The Skaven are nothing more than a myth started by some traumatized guardsmen who couldn't handle the sight of an abhuman. The very idea of a rat like Xenos worshipping some previously undiscovered chaos god is ludicrous. The Ordo Theoreticus taking this seriously is nothing short of a complete waste of the Inquisition's time and resources. Oh, for throne's sake. Restore previous file version! The Skaven are a particularly vile Xenos race with a strong resemblance to the ancient Terran creatures known as rats. While a wide variety of information is available about them, sadly, almost none of it can be confirmed by entirely trustworthy sources. In fact, the only information that isn't derived from inconsistent battlefield accounts and barely intelligible vox and video feeds comes from the torture and interrogation of Eldari, heretic Astartes, and demons, which is more likely to be false than not. The Ordo Theoreticus has theorized that some sort of preternatural compulsion surrounding the Skaven may be actively compelling any who have not witnessed them firsthand to actively deny their existence entirely, rationalizing it away by any possible means. Sadly, the nature of this has made coordination with other orders of the Inquisition to collect more accurate intelligence nearly impossible, to the point where they actively impede such investigation. <clears throat> to make the situation even more bizarre, for some reason, the most actively cooperative entities in investigating and countering the activities of these creatures appear to be chaotic forces aligned with Slanesh, for reasons that continue to baffle the Ordo Theoreticus. According to interrogated Eldari, the species began as the Scavenoir, one of the first creations of the Old Ones. Gifted with insatiable curiosity and nearly incalculable birth rate, they were designed to develop new technology for the old ones, tinkering with extremely dangerous technological concepts and quickly replacing their losses when those experiments went horribly wrong. When one of their concepts showed promise, the old ones would refine it into a safer, more stable form and utilize it for themselves and their other creations. Some of their notable achievements include Warpstone, a process they use to synthesize the energies of the Realm of Souls into a physical power source that would later become the technological basis for Wraithbone, and the Underway, a crude tunnel-like network through the Realm of Souls that would eventually serve as the basic framework for the Webway. They even formed a city for themselves in the Underway called Skavenblight, a concept later copied by the Eldari in establishing the webway city of Komorog. When the war in heaven began, the Old Ones used Skavenoir as cannon fodder, forcing them to rely on their own crude, undeveloped technologies and treating them as an expendable screening force for the more powerful Eldari and Krog. As the war in heaven dragged on, the Realm of Souls was twisted more and more into the hellish realm we know today as the Warp and this in turn caused the Warpstone their society relied on to become unstable and mutagenic. While their gradual exposure to warp energies over time led to a remarkable level of resistance to physical mutation, it still twisted the minds of the Scavenoir, causing them to become paranoid, cruel, malicious and deceptive. As the old ones began dying off and their minds continued to deteriorate, the Scavenoir claimed their independence and attempted to forge their own empire, now calling themselves the Skaven. Without the oversight of the Old Ones, their society degenerated into a series of feuding clans and their paranoia and infighting caused them to be amongst the first races defeated by the Necrons. The Skaven were pushed out of the material world and into the webway, where they clashed with the Eldari of Komorag until the Eldari retaliation drove them back even further into their crude underway. Eventually, the Skaven were forced to flee back to Skavenblight itself, and when even that fell before the Eldari, a sudden explosion of psychic energy wiped out what the Eldari believed was all life in the underway. However, the Eldari later learned that only their own forces died in the explosion. For it wasn't some warp born explosive device gone horribly wrong, as they originally believed, 
but the birth of the chaos god of ruination, the Great Horned Rat. Interrogation of demons and heretic Astartes reveals what happened next. Free of the threat of the Eldari, the newborn chaos god spent the next several millennia consolidating his power and conquering the entirety of the Skaven, claiming them as the children of the Horned Rat. He then handpicked what he decided were the twelve most vicious and cunning Skaven from the teeming masses and elevated them to join him in a governing body known as the Council of Thirteen, providing Skaven society with a societal structure with just the right balance of unity and treachery to suit his twisted tastes. Once the Great Horned Rat was satisfied, the Skaven made preparations to return to the material realm but upon breaking into the material realm, they discovered a vastly different galaxy awaiting them. The Old Ones gone, the Krog degenerated into the Brutal Orcs, the Eldari Empire destroyed, a new Chaos God born from the Eldari's fall, and the Imperium of Man leading their Great Crusade across the stars. At first, they attempted to take advantage of the disunity amongst the various factions of humanity and Xenos throughout the galaxy, and claim what they could before the wretched man-things did. But after one brutal encounter with the World Eaters, they barely registered as a footnote in Imperial history. The Skaven thought better of it and retreated back into the Underway. Testimony from the Eldari, known as Harlequins, provide an interesting side note on an event that occurred around this time that would have been written off as obviously false if there wasn't significant evidence of it personally experienced by the writer of this log. According to the Harlequins, their god, Chegorak, fled into the realm of the Great Horned Rat while fleeing Slanesh. The Laughing God offered him a deal. Hold back Slanesh, and, in exchange, he would grant the Skaven what he called the Blessing of Denial, causing all but those who had encountered the Skaven personally to refuse to believe in their existence, allowing the Great Horned Rat time to further develop his people. At first, the Great Horned Rat refused and intended to kill the Laughing God himself, but when this new upstart god intruded upon his realm as well, the Great Horned Rat accepted, though only because he was about to attack Slanesh anyway, and might as well secure a reward for his trouble. The two gods fought to a standstill, with Slanesh withdrawing once all hope of catching Chegorak was lost. While Slanesh still hates corn above all, save the Emperor of Man, the Dark Prince and the Great Horned Rat still, to this day, hold a particular loathing for one another, both regarding each other as illegitimate members of the Great Four. As said before, all of this comes from less than trustworthy sources and must be taken with a grain of salt. However, the most reliable information comes from a battle that occurred just after the Cicatrix Maledictum formed, known as the Gonara Breach Incident. Official records state that it was a humiliating defeat for the Imperium in the Gonara system by the forces of Chaos, but the reality is a bit more... Um, complicated. This is also the best evidence to support the, for lack of a better term, aura of disbelief surrounding the Skaven, as the Administratum still to this day refuses to acknowledge the Skavens as the true opponents of the conflict despite the corroborating accounts from no less than five chapters of the Adeptus Astartes and two Lord Inquisitors. Based on revelations from the Emperor's Tarot, Lord Inquisitor Zandrian von Leer of the Ordo Hereticus summoned as much Imperial aid as he could to the Gunara system to face an unknown foe. Five different chapters of the Adeptus Astartes answered the call. The Draken Harbingers, the Sun Serpents, Dawn's Crusaders, the Knights Celestial, and the White Bears. Just as they began establishing their defenses, a massive fleet of seemingly ramshackle vessels appeared out of somewhere unidentified, though it was clearly neither the warp nor the webway. Not long after, more Astartes reinforcements arrived. Claiming at first to be an Imperial Fist successor chapter, they were in fact the Emperor's Children Chaos Warband, known as the Knights of Leren. As fighting both the planet's surface and in the void escalated, the Knights of Leren were forced to reveal their true identities in order to fully utilize their Slaneshi capabilities, which inadvertently shattered coherency amongst the Allies, 
forcing the Sun Serpents, Knight Celestial, and Lord Inquisitor Toplov of the Order of Astartes into the unenviable position of actively fighting fellow loyal Astartes in order to protect vile heretics. While the Imperial forces fought amongst themselves, the Knights of Leren summoned other warbands of the heretic Astartes to their side and, with the help of the Knight Celestial, managed to destroy a strange Skaven superweapon consisting of a giant bell that could severely disrupt all ships and warp entities in the system by ringing it. Meanwhile, the White Bear's chapter, realizing the Gunara system was lost, shifted their focus to gathering as much information on these enemies as possible in order to prevent future defeats against this particularly vile enemy. Ultimately, the Skaven succeeded in their apparent goal, using their twisted technology to break into the webway, presumably in a direct assault on Komarag. The fate of both the Skaven fleet and the Dark City are currently unknown. In the aftermath, the Draken Harbingers and Dawn's Crusaders both lost roughly two-thirds of their entire chapters, along with the Draken Harbingers chapter master and chief librarian and the Sun Serpent's Master of Sanctity. Fortunately, the new Chapter Master was able to mend diplomatic relations with the Sun Serpents and the Knight Celestial. There are also unconfirmed reports of an agreement between the Knights of Lerin and the loyal chapters involved to aid one another should either of them encounter the Skaven again, though with no guarantee of cooperation under any other circumstances. While this battle was a particularly humiliating defeat for the Imperium, intelligence gathered by the White Bears has been particularly valuable, despite only being taken seriously by the Ordo Theoreticus. The hierarchy appears to be led by grey-furred sorcerers referred to as Gracias, with a black-furred warrior caste and brown-furred slaves. Their tactics appear to primarily involve massive screening forces of brown-furred Skaven used to protect their more elite forces who do the majority of the actual damage, which include well-equipped Blackfurred warriors known as the Warp Guard. The previously mentioned Graciers and dreadnought sized mutated monstrosities of varying degrees of foulness and power, who fight with virtually no regard for the survival of their brown-furred allies. The White Bears also managed to vaguely identify some of the clans. Clan Morse appears to be their primary warrior clan. Clan Eshin seems to specialize in stealth warfare. Clan Mulder appears to engage in foul genetic heresy and flesh crafting to create their hulking monsters. And Clan Skaya seems primarily composed of so-called warlock engineers who seem to use some form of foul warp-born technomancy to create their powerful but unstable technology. There seem to be some mention of a clan Pestilence as well, who utilize plague and biological warfare, and appear to be equally devoted to the Great Horned Rat and the Chaos God Nurgle, that they seemed to be defunct as a unified clan, and somehow clandestine even by Skaven sensibilities, operating secretly as tools for the other clans. From the same conflict, the Sun Serpents, the Night Celestial, as well as envoys from the chaos-worshipping Knights of Leren, managed to put some amount of information together as to how their ships likely function during their boarding actions. The hull of the ships themselves appear to contain trace amounts of warp stone, allowing for some degree of regenerative capability, although this appears to have the side effect of making the strength of said hull completely variable. An area of a millimeter might be able to shrug off a Nova cannon while one a meter thick might collapse under a last gun shot. While the process isn't sufficiently understood, that notably untrustworthy Knights of Lerin envoys theorized that the strength of the hull varied entirely based on the whims of the warp stone within it, and might not even stay consistent from one moment to the next. Picks of the bridge on Skaven ships also showed a complete lack of any traditional control systems, instead simply containing what appeared to be a Grey Seer strapped to a giant piece of warp stone. Whether the Grey Seer controls the ship from here, or the warp stone is the ship's power source, is unconfirmed. But the current running theory is that both are true, with the Grey Seer serving as both captain and machine spirit. 
How such a vulnerable Gracia manages to avoid mutiny under such circumstances in a society so prone to betrayal and short-sightedness is unknown. Due to the gravity of this threat and the unwillingness of the wider Imperium to cooperate in combating it, the Order of Theoreticus has established a database where any survivors of Skaven encounters, even those not aligned with the Imperium, can bring any more detailed tactical information they find in hopes of circumventing their aura of disbelief and fighting back this galaxy-wide threat. The following are brief summaries of such encounters thus far. In 095M42, the 4th Company of Storm Wraiths chapter received report of Xeno's activity not far from the Maelstrom in the neighboring Eurek system and was requested by Imperial authorities to investigate. Upon arrival, the Storm Wraiths 4th Company strike cruiser Lightning Skiss was beset by swarms of ramshackle Xeno's vessels of unknown origin. After successfully repelling the forces, including boarding parties, that led to the deaths of 23 Battle Brothers, the chapter was contacted by the Ordo Theoreticus and interviewed on the nature of their attack. Interviews with Battle Brothers and the company captain indicated that the Skaven seemed to excel in close quarters melee scuffles, relying heavily on sheer numbers to overwhelm their opponents. Records also indicate the arrival of so-called Rat Ogrons into the fray during enemy boarding attempts, but records are spotty on the nature of these creatures. In 096M42, the pleasure world of Murinay III was infiltrated by the heretic Astartes warband known as the Knights of Leren. As they began sowing the seeds of the Slaneshi cult, however, key individuals they managed to corrupt kept mysteriously dying. It took almost a year of investigation on their part, but they eventually uncovered an infestation of unidentified rat-like Xenos, referring to themselves as Clan Eshin. Rather than spend another year trying to hunt them all down, the Knights of Leren simply allowed themselves to be discovered by the Inquisition and evacuated the planet shortly before it was subjected to exterminators. In 098M42, an administratum dignitary was kidnapped by a coven of Skaven while en route through space. The Ashen Knights responded to the distress signal, not fully knowing what they would find. After some time, trying to locate the lost captive, they found the Skaven and attempted to stop them from sacrificing the captives to their Dark Guard. The ensuing fight was, suffice to say, one of the most vicious they had ever seen. Many lives were lost on both sides, but ultimately the Astartes did manage to rescue a number of captives of the Imperium, and oddly even some Eldar that had been captured as well. In 101 M42, the Ordo Theoreticus managed to capture and interrogate a member of the Dread Legion. They revealed that shortly before the 13th Black Crusade, the Great Horned Rat assaulted the realm of Dreleth, the Chaos God of Fear. Upon seeing the massive force moving against him, Dreleth and the Dread Legion immediately fled, surrendering his castle, the Screaming Fortress, without a fight. Unopposed, the Great Horned Rat usurped his realm, stole his sacred number, and converted the Screaming Fortress into a ship for his Skaven forces. The whereabouts of Dreleth and the Dread Legion are currently unknown.